Hey, it's Hutch from Hutch iPerf. This, I think, should be the last installment of the wiring harness, which is good because I am completely done with having to do this. I'm glad I did it, but um, I'm, I'm thoroughly done. So this is the last push, and then I start tearing stuff apart and going on to the next thing. So let's take a look real quick. <laughs> Compressor clutch switch is connected. That'll run along the back. Let's look over here. So that'll snake in and goes in between this gap, the back of the bracket. Then it comes around here and it will go behind this. And then it'll just tuck up and connect in here. So let's see the connector. So I did the other side of this uh, 46 amp connector. And so it's the power wire ground and then the trigger wire for the clutch. I've doubled up the wire on the compressor clutch uh, power wire. And that just runs out to whatever I had extra. I've got, I've got cooling fans that I'm putting in. And part of the kit is you splice into the power wire for the clutch. So that way when you turn the AC on, fans come on full time because you're you're using the system more it's going to create more heat because of the the condenser in the front so that's there for that so I've given myself plenty of power line to get back to the kits um, relay holder so where that goes so now we come around and then the last thing we have to do is oil pressure coolant temp and then back the alternator and then yeah that's it the oil pressure switch there's this rubber boot and you can see the slit in there the the connector is embedded in the rubber i took the old one just to see can i take this apart because i would love to have this entire thing look very factory so tan wire all the way up and in here but in trying to get the old one out and it could just be because it was old I just had to tear the thing apart to be able to get that out. And I just don't think that's necessary just to satisfy my own ego for this. So this will go in and I'm just going to live with the gray wire. And let's see. So you've got, you've got this, uh, this opening down here. So I've fed the wire over from the other side from back behind the battery, it comes over on top of the gearbox up through the bracket, and then it'll come up and then go around this way to the back. So I think right here, this is the tan wire. I'm just going to, just going to have this thing branch off here, and then this will connect like so. So if I just cut both of these right here, I can just quickly but connect these together and then that will be the harness for this side. And I'm just going to live with the gray wire and this is going to be how it is. In fact, I may, what I may do is I may cut it off longer so that way you don't see the butt connector on the outside. Yeah, that's actually a better idea. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut it down here and then that way uh, the butt connection will just be inside the harness. And said the tan wire, it's just going to be gray, and I'm going to live with it. So besides that one, everything else, I'm actually going to get the crimp the terminals on the end, make it look legit. So this is our alternator connector. This, um, this is a CS130 alternator. And uh, there's a, I probably showed it in a previous video, but this is part of a conversion kit. And the two wires were red and I think yellow, and where this one is brown. And there was an inline resistor. That inline resistor is for 
running a gauge instead of a dummy light. So I just removed the resistor, put it onto this wire, clicked everything up together, and then now I just gotta feed these in and then put the, oh, there it is, and then put the back retainer clip back on. Okay, and then that, this goes in the, this goes in the second holder. There, okay. So that's together, and now we'll just feed up the rubber boot onto the back side. That goes back in there like so. Keeps it weather tight. All right, with those connected in, there's this little plastic clip. That goes in here, and that snaps on. This is, and I found this out when I was trying to depin this, and I'm like, oh, dummy, you left the clip in. So this keeps your connections from backing out. So it's like a bolsters the bottom of the, the connector. So that goes right in there. Power wire is going to loop around and go to the back of our terminal. So let's see, let's give that a little bit of room. Yeah, so right about, right about there. Cut that off and then we'll put a crimper connector onto that. And that will be in place, ready to go. All right, so got that keyed and marked, so I put it in, in the right clocking position. Very nice. Heat shrink and make sure the writing is on the back where you can't see it. Yes, I am that bad when it comes to this stuff. All right, so the harness will come up and I think I'll feed it right under here and then back over to the alternator so that'll be a real short be a short real short run maybe i can actually actually if that is like that i can i can hide some of that in the harness and have it come out the back like so and then the harness will come up to here so this is going to loop back join in oh, how's that going to be right there so if i pull this back oh, so if i pull that back to there i can cut that there and splice that in in that location and that That'll be hidden up in the harness. All right. Uh, okay, let me get this off and do another crimp. All right, now with that butt connection there, what I'm gonna do is use the heat shrink and this stuff shrinks up enough. What I wanna do is do like I did on this side. So the resistor is in its own separate piece of heat shrink, basically just holding that thing stable and uh, weatherproof and then I use two separate pieces of heat shrink on either side to cover up the, the buck connectors. Last two, for the top of the engine, this is going to be coolant sensor, yeah, probably something right there. Put my connectors on, snap that together ready to go so here is the deep pinned connector and i've got my two crimps 
And I know by looking at the old one that green was on the left and green and white on the right. So that is in, how do I want that to look? And snap that down in there. Click that on. Done. So let's see, so that will feed, I had to feed some of it out to do the crimp. And I'll have to figure out how to hold these wires in close. So there, so it'll look something like that. So with that in place, I'll have to figure out, maybe put like a little tiny shoot of a uh, casing on that just to kind of cover up some of the wires and get this a little closer down here. But basically, that is, that is how it looks. Let's come around here. This will feed underneath. I'll get more of that up inside the casing. Now something like that. I'll have that kind of, let's see if we can feed that underneath. Yeah, I'll figure out the wires a little bit better once uh, everything goes together. But yeah, trying to make it as minimalistic as possible. Try to hide it as best I can to jumble the stuff down here in the corner. But there's just no way around it. There's wires I got to go to stuff. But that's as that's as neat as and clean as probably you're going to be able to get having a sensor right up on top of the intake manifold like that. Got another one that goes in over here. This is going to be the coolant sensor for the uh, for the uh, electric fans. Almost forgot the charging wire. Not necessarily part of the wiring harness, but this has got to. I want to get this in place before I start getting this thing close to what I would call done. And now with it in its own wiring sheath. That will go down into here. Yeah, right about yeah, right about there. This is a painless kit. It comes with its own 200 amp maxi fuse that you put in line between power cable and the battery. So there's no fusible link anymore the way that I'm setting it up. So it's going straight from the alternator right down and into our junction box. So this will just be a little bit of insurance. They sell it with the kit, so it came with it because it's six gauge wire. It's really for like, um, they list it as like a, a heavy duty alternator system, like 170, 190 amps, and, and this thing's only 105. It's, a, it's like a factory uh, blazer alternator. So, but I'm still gonna put it on, why not? I mean, well, <laughs> Who's going to argue with me being too safe so anyway so this will go down here just below where this junction box is and i'm going to bolt it right to the side of the plastic housing um, hopefully the uh, the screws that it comes with will bite into this plastic and hold it in place if not i can bolt and nut it from the back but that's where it's going to go Let's see put that right on this flat right there So if this comes down, why don't we put it in here between that, just for the time being, that's probably right there. I'll cut it off. All right, so we can cut that right about there. I 
And then there's my mark. So we'll cut this bad boy right there. All right, crimped, put together, heat shrunk, and in place. So now, this one on. Ah, get out of the way so they can see. So now with this one on, now we do our feed wire that'll loop around and go into our junction box. All right, put this underneath here. This will be our second. This will be our second wire coming from the other side of this 200 amp fuse. All right, then I'll loop up and let's make that let's make that a little bit tighter. Doesn't need to be anything too excessive. Uh, right about right about like that. See if I can do this one-handed. <laughs> I accidentally marked it and that's perfect. All right, it's good. Okay, that's done. Got it its own little sheath here. Let's come back up. This bad boy will go right in there. This guy will go on top. I can't do it one-handed, that's better. So everything's connected in there, bolted up, and I'm going to have to I'm going to, have to cut that hole a bit bigger to fit that. Anyway, that is that's everything. That'll snap back on there. Cover that up. Yeah. Oh well, that is everything. Well. I say that and then there's that. So I'm not ready to put the distributor in because I want to prime the engine one last time before I start it up. And I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to start it up because I got so much to do and the dash isn't in and there's no gas tank and no fuel lines. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that I, <laughs> that's left to be done. So uh, yeah, that is just staying where it is. I don't even want to hook up the, the brake warning light down to the proportioning valve because I got to run the exhaust and I just want to make sure I give myself enough room to put all that in, oh, man, it is hot. Wow, I picked a humid day to come out here and mess with this. All right, well, that, that is it. That's the whole harness. That's all the sensors. That's headlights, uh, horns, all the way back to C100 down the corner. Nice and fit inside the inner fender well. Both sides will be like that. Trying to reduce these wires so you don't see them. And that's about as much wiring as you'll see on the front. I still, I'm going to fix that up a little bit, but for now, yeah, that's the way it looks. Oh, I'm hot. You need to subscribe. That's what you need to do. I'm burning up out here. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. That's it for this one. I'm done with the harness. That's it. It's done. That's all I'm going to do. Now I'm going to start tearing stuff apart and I got to work on this core support, get that smoothed out and, um, figure out my fans and everything. Uh, yeah, but I gotta do something else. I gotta, I gotta play with something else. Maybe I'll work on the headers. I might put the exhaust in. That might be something fun to do. All right, well, that's it for now. This is Hutch from Hutch High Perf. I am hot. Holy cow, it's hot out here. Uh, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Don't make me do this for nothing. All right, um, I'm done whining. So this is Hutch from Hutch High Perf. Appreciate you guys being here. Take it easy.